ఇంటర్మీడియట్ విద్యా రంగంలో అగ్రగామి మన ఎన్ఎస్ఆర్ ఇంపల్స్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ ఇన్స్టిట్యూషన్ ఐఐటి జేఏఐ తిరుగులేని విద్యా సంస్థ ఎన్ఎస్ఆర్ ఇంపల్స్ లెట్ ఎస్ కంటిన్యూ అబౌట్ ఏరియల్ స్టెమ్ మోడిఫికేషన్స్ సో ఇన్ స్టెమ్ మోడిఫికేషన్స్ వీ హ్యావ్ ఆల్ టుగెదర్ త్రీ కేటగిరీస్ అండర్గ్రౌండ్ స్టెమ్ మోడిఫికేషన్స్ ఏరియల్ స్టెమ్ మోడిఫికేషన్స్ అండ్ సబ్ ఏరియల్ స్టెమ్ మోడిఫికేషన్స్ we discussed underground and subaerial let us talk about aerial stem modifications now in aerial stem modifications let us talk about the first one is tendons what is the first one what we have is tendons now if you take the tendons here they are aerial and helps in aerial helps in climbing aerial and helps in climbing aerial helps in climbing just for support especially they provide what is called as mechanical support they provide what is called mechanical support so if you take here so aerial they grow upper side helps in climbing they help for climbing and provides mechanical support so tendons if you look at we may be find axillary bud modified into tendril or terminal bud get modified into tendril so what is axillary bud modified into tendril in some cases in some of the plant now if you take this is a plant if you take this is a plant what happens this is apical bud or uh, this is sorry this is terminal bud right so this is what is called axillary bud this is axillary bud this is axillary bud it get modified into tendril when axillary bud get modified into tendril that you find in some cases in some cases terminal bud get modified into tendrils so in some cases if you take this is a plant if this is a plant the terminal bud get modified into tendril so this is terminal bud this is terminal bud it get modified into tendril if you look at what is a tendril if you look at what is a tendril then you can discuss this as thin wiry coiled structure how do you define a tendril you can refer this as what a thin wiry coil structure on the plants you can see in some cases a thin wiry coil structure like this this thin wiry coil structures these are called as what tendrils these are referred as tendrils so in some cases axillary bud get modified into tendril this is axillary bud it get modified into tendril in some cases terminal bud get modified into tendril okay so where do you find axillary bud for example let us talk about fasciflora and along with the fasciflora you can take gourds especially watermelon pumpkin pumpkin including cucumber okay so we find axillary bud get modified into what you call tendril axillary bud get modified into tendril so that is fasciflora we find and gourds you know watermelon pumpkin and this in all these cases axillary bud this is axillary bud it will get modified into tendril so what is a tendril i repeat again tendril is referred as structurally it is thin wiry coil structure very thin and wire coiled structure where it is present definitely it's an aerial one right modification of the stem helps in climbing it helps for climbing and it provides what is called or it provides uh, what you call mechanical support means it takes the support from the plant right so here terminal bud means you can take white is that is grape vines grape vines so you can take vines w yeah grape vines and you can take example cissus cissus whitis in these two cases terminal get modified into tendril 
I hope it is clear now. Tendrils are thin, wiry coiled structures, aerial, helps in calming and they take mechanical support. Uh, axillary bud get modified in tendril in passiflora. Uh, you have to remember all these examples. Make sure that you practice all these examples. Where axillary bud modified into tendril, passiflora, gods, which gods, watermelon, pumpkin and cucumber. Terminal bud get modified in tendril where white is that is grapevines and even you find in case of scissors. Right, that is first one. Second one is we find thorns. What are these thorns here? They are nothing but pointed, pointed woody structures helps in protection. Helps in protection. Pointed woody structures helps in protection. They are called as what? Thorns. Now, if you look at in case of thorns, in some plants you can see that here. So, here if this is a leaf like this, a pointed, a pointed like this. Yes or no? Okay. So, here this is pointed and they are woody structures and they helps for protection any grazing animal if it want to eat or it want to damage the plant plant can protect with the help of thorns so these are called thorns these needle like structures are called thorns so in some cases axillary bud get modified into thorns in some cases terminal bud get modified into thorns in some cases axillary bud get modified into thorn in some cases terminal bud get modified into thorn where axillary bud you can take for example you can take uh, dioscoria duranta in these plants axillary bud get modified this is axillary bud this is axillary bud get modified into thorn right so for example you take carica in case of carica guys this all are nothing but names of the plant we have to remember so they show modification called thorns what are thorns means pointed structures if axillary bud get modified into thorns you have to remember the examples of the plants i will pronounce it again dioscoria next one is duranta where terminal bud get modified into thorn what is terminal bud here suppose if you take this is a plant your terminal bud get modified into thorn like this so this is terminal bud this is terminal bud that get modified into thorn that you find in case of carica they helps in protection similarly we find hooks same structures but slight difference we find what you can find pointed a curved needle like structures are called pointed curved needle like structures are called hooks so in this also we find axillary bud get modified into hooks in some cases terminal bud get modified into hooks i repeat again what are this a pointed curved needle like axillary body for example if you take so here this is nothing but the leaf this is axillary bud so from this you can see the structure like this so you can see structure like this what is the difference here they are woody pointed only one difference is they are woody pointed but in this case they are curved like this they are curved okay so what do we say pointed curved and needle like structures are called hooks pointed straight structures are called thorns that is the only difference that is the only difference one second okay so here in these cases terminal but get modified into thorns so for example if you take in this case 
like this. What happens in this case? Here terminal bud get modified into cord structure that is called as hook. Here axillary bud get modified into cord structure that is called hook. So, what is the difference between thorns and hook? Needle uh, straight pointed here curved and needle. So, let us talk about the fourth one. What is the fourth one we have? Photosynthetic cladophyll or phylloclay. So, here when we write photosynthetic, you automatically understand some modification of the stem. It undergoes photosynthesis. So, photosynthetic one which undergo cladophyll or phylloclay. Okay. So, if you take here, let us talk about phylloclay. Let us talk about phylloclay and also let us talk about cladophyll. So, we find a small difference in both cases. In both you find photosynthetic stem no doubt that is why we call photosynthetic cladophyll or phylloclade. Okay. Photosynthetic cladophyll or phylloclade these two with a small difference. What is that? Let us talk about phylloclade, let us talk about cladophyll. In both cases what happens? Here photosynthesis takes place, stem undergoes photosynthesis. Let us talk about phylloclade here. So, what is this phylloclade? In this phylloclade, stem is modified, stem undergoes modification and perform photosynthesis. Stem will specially it will undergo some changes. Stem will undergo some changes. What is the changes that modify? Changes itself is called modifications. Stem is modified to what? For what purpose? To perform photosynthesis. You know generally you will get a doubt in all cases stem is green, in all plants stem perform photosynthesis then why we write specially as photosynthetic. Here is the difference. Let us look at the examples. In some cases stem is becomes fleshy, flattened for example you find in case of opuntia. So what you find in case of opuntia? This is opuntia plant you know most common one. Right. In this what happens? Leaves are reduced to form spines. Leaves are modified to form spines. Leaves appears like this. Then leaves become spines. What about the stem? Stem is flattened, stem is flattened, fleshy and undergoes photosynthesis. Why? Leaf is not doing photosynthesis. That is why stem is modified to perform photosynthesis. So, here why leaves are not doing the photosynthesis because we all know very well it is a xerophytic plant. If leaves are well developed completely leaves loses water by transpiration. So, xerophytic plant it will undergo some modifications, some changes. What are the changes? Leaves are reduced to spines, small small spines. When leaves become spines who prepares the food? So, stem will take up the function, I will prepare the food. So, stem becomes fleshy and it becomes flattened and undergo photosynthesis that you find in case of opentia. Similarly, let us continue some more examples under phylloclid. Now, if you take some more examples, you can also write a fleshy cylindrical, fleshy cylindrical. Now, if you take in this case fleshy cylindrical, you can take example casuarina. So, in this case no doubt stem becomes fleshy and moreover it becomes very cylindrical. What is that? Casuarina and in some cases even it become a needle like. Okay. Uh, in some casuarina members it is cylindrical, in some members of casuarina it is needle like. You can also take one more example euphorbia, euphorbia. So better sometimes question comes and if you have chance to confuse better you do one thing. Most of the species casuarina is a genus name, casuarina is a genus name. You have so many species. But most of the casuarina species where stem is needle like. But you remove this otherwise you will confuse because. Okay. So, why because if you go into the depth again you will get confusion and when you go to the 
deep of the concept at that time once again we have to discuss about casuarina at that time i'll tell you some members of casuarina is fleshy cylindrical we have to discuss this point once again at the time of casuarina discussion at that time i'll tell you but to here here also casuarina here also casuarina means at the time when you're learning so basics you'll have chance to confuse so most of the casuarina species generally the stem is modified into a needle like structure but still performs photosynthesis in members of euphorbia stem becomes fleshy cylindrical and performs photosynthesis here casuarina also you can take example but very few casuarina has fleshy cylindrical most of the casuarina has needle like stem this is what is called phylloclade then what is cladophyll in this case here branches of limited growth branches of limited growth what you can see here branches of limited growth and undergo photosynthesis undergo photosynthesis so both are almost same no what is the difference so here phylloclade means we wrote stem same only but in this case this is stem but in this case this is branches that's why we write either we write phylloclade or we write what is called cladophyll so in both the cases in some cases here stem is modified here stem is modified here stem is modified stem is modified if stem is modified undergoes photosynthesis this is phylloclade or it is also called cladophyll with a minute difference what is a minute difference in this case branches branches of limited growth branches will condense and they show limited growth and also undergo what is called photosynthesis example you can take ruscus asparagus you can take ruscus and asparagus so in both the cases here what happens the stem is like this no doubt the stem is like this but what happens in this case branches becomes condensed and they form a needle like limited growth they condensed and they grow limited very condensed so limited growth and condensed branches are condensed no leaves branches are condensed no leaves when branches are condensed and no leaves here then that is said to be called as what cladophyll guys i hope you got the clear clarity okay so where do you find such type in case of ruscus and asparagus again i repeat photosynthetic cladophyll or phylloclade photosynthetic cladophyll or phylloclade here stem performs photosynthesis here stem performs photosynthesis in some members it's called cladophyll in some members it's called phylloclade what is the difference phylloclade means stem modified and perform photosynthesis stem become fleshy and flattened example opuntia as it exhibits xerophyte leaves become spines and stem becomes flattened fleshy undergo photosynthesis similarly fleshy cylindrical stem you find in case of euphorbia needle like stem you find in case of casuarina in all cases what you find stem undergo photosynthesis called phylloclade then what is cladophyll a slight difference what is a slight difference here in this case the branches of limited growth and they are condensed they are condensed they'll become short they are very very limited growth and undergo what is called photosynthesis example now you take a ruscus and asparagus i hope you got the clear clarity difference between phylloclade and uh, cladophyll right let's continue
what is the next category we have bulbil what is that bulbil bulbil is nothing but so here in this case what happens here the part will undergo photosynthesis not only photosynthesis and stores food what is the additional thing here it will undergo photosynthesis and stores food it stores food so any part of the plant especially here talking stem no stem will undergo photosynthesis and also stores food if it stores food it becomes bulbous it becomes pollen then it is called as what bulbil it is referred as what bulbil so if you take in this case in some cases vegetative bud vegetative bud stores food that you find example again dioscorea that you find again in case of dioscorea in some members floral bud undergo photosynthesis and stores food that you find in case of globa and agave what is the meaning of this what is a bulbil a part of the stem undergo photosynthesis and stores food what is a vegetative bud so here it is like this if this is also vegetative bud apical bud and this is also axillary bud both are called vegetative buds okay so vegetative bud stores food that you find in dioscorea dioscorea is also example for other one we discussed right dioscorea shows two types of stem modifications that all extra question related points i'll give you later so dioscorea once again example for bulbil i pronounce bulbil what is a bulbil earlier case stem does only photosynthesis prepares the food and it will supply food to all the parts that's the fourth category what is the fifth category in some members it not only prepares the food by photosynthesis it also stores the food it stores food then it becomes swollen it becomes bulbous it will become swollen then it is called bulbil where it stores food maybe in some cases vegetative bud stores food what is a vegetative bud first of all see this is apical bud see this is axillary bud both are referred as vegetative buds apical bud is also called vegetative bud axillary bud is also called vegetative bud why so here apical bud also leads to formation of leaves flowers fruits leaves and branches axillary bud also forms leaves and branches so apical bud also forms vegetative organs what are vegetative organs stem branches leaves axillary bud also lead to formation of branches leaves stem that's why apical bud and vegetative axillary bud both are called as vegetative buds in dioscorea apical buds undergo photosynthesis stores food so this is called as what bulbil or here it stores food it becomes swollen part of the stem becomes swollen and stores food this is also called bulbil so when vegetative bud stores food that is called bulbil in fine in case of dioscorea then what is the meaning of floral bud here so in some members now this is a bud from which a flower bud is coming okay let us take rose bud is coming now the bud which gives flower the bud which gives flower bud which gives flower it's called 
फ्लोरल बर्ड ओके द बर्ड विच गिवस फ्लेवर इज कॉल्ड फ्लोरल बर्ड दिस इज द वन विच इज हेलियर लाइक ए बर्ड नाउ दिस इज ऑल्सो फ्लोरल बर्ड सो वेयर बर्ड इज लाइक दिस लेटर इट बिकम्स वॉट इट बिकम्स फ्लेवर ये सन सो एज दिस बर्ड गिवस राइज टू फ्लेवर दिस इज कॉल्ड फ्लोरल बर्ड वेन अवर फ्लोरल बर्ड स्टोर्स फूड एंड इट बिकम्स बल्बस और इट बिकम्स फोल एंड then this is also called bulbil so floral bud also stores food that you find in case of pronunciation you see globa so what is the example globa again nothing more you have to remember all the plant examples in which what type of modification is there you have to remember right so this is this all are nothing but common der word aerial stem modifications all together we have five categories what are the five categories we study first one is tendril thorns hooks phylloclade or cladophyll and next one is nothing but what bulbil right so here this is all nothing but what we call stem modifications what i'll tell you is all of you here what you can do is you take one horizontal pitch a small work i'm giving you take a horizontal page in the notebook okay and start writing stem modifications as it gave you the block diagram on the first day remember so stem modifications and start writing uh, what you call all three categories underground stem modification but i'll give you block diagram but instead of i am giving you work to you better i'll write down so that you can copy down you can practice this table is very very important so better i will only give you what i thought was underground stem modifications right or four types rhizome comb tuber and bulb along with examples so you have to remember what is the type and examples very very important so you have to make this table second one is what sub aerial so what do you study runners stolons suckers offset examples so you have to write all examples very very important this table is very important for you and next one is what aerial stem modifications what we discuss tendrils thorns hooks and phylloclade or cladophyll and even we find what is called bulbil all examples okay if you can make this table if you practice number of times you can remember all stem modifications even though the first year concept you have a quite good chances of getting questions from morphology morphology the chapter is basics but have good weightage for final year you have expectation of getting a question from stem modifications every year we'll get a question from stem modifications okay but uh, i thought i can uh, allot this work to you but uh, i'll write down note down very clearly what you can do is take the horizontal page in the notebook start writing along with me guys stem modifications is important so what you can do is take one horizontal page start writing along with me with the neat handwriting write all three categories write so clearly with the spelling for the example look for the pronunciation listen carefully the pronunciation each for each type practice all the examples on the paper and try to remember this is very very important okay so whatever we have discussed so far i'm trying to give you one block diagram okay so let us take first one underground stem modifications first category and second one is subaerial stem modifications
and third category is aerial stem modifications okay so take the horizontal page write all three categories what's the first category underground stem modifications subaerial stem modifications aerial stem modifications write down uh, take the flow chart on a horizontal page start writing the sub categories what are the four categories we studied first one is rhizome so what are the examples for rhizome we studied gingiber officinalis what is this commonly called ginger then curcuma longa it's commonly called turmeric musa musa commonly called as what banana similarly second category what is that com okay in com what are the examples is just a subheading and examples practice it this all are examples now what are the examples we studied amorphophallus commonly called zemin corn okay and then colocasia so these two are examples for corn next is stem tuber what are the examples we studied solanum tuberosum it's commonly called potato and stachys tuberifera right stachyos it stores the food called stachyos sugar then dahlia what do you find the sugar inulin you remember we studied all these examples are very important then next one is bulb in this what we study two types what are the two categories imbricated bulb and tunicated bulb so first one we are writing tunicated bulb what are the examples allium sepa it's commonly called as onion yes or no and other one is silla indica yes so all the examples next other one is imbricated bulb so here you can take example lilium and in between who will come allium sativum what is allium sativum garlic so these are all examples for underground stem modifications rhizome examples com examples stem tuber examples bulb examples similarly subaerial stem modifications what is the first category runners only the sub category and examples what are the examples you will get oxalis cynodon it's called dope grass right and also fragaria what is this fragaria strawberry and hydrocotyle so this all are examples for runners then stolons what are the examples for stolons so far whatever we have discussed everything we are putting on one block diagram so far what we have discussed are more modifications we are putting on the block diagram so he can write here rosa nerium jasmine okay right next to see is succus what we studied for succus chrysanthemum musa and pineapple next d is 
offset. What we studied? Pistia. It's commonly called as what? Water cabbage. Okay. And hycornia. It's commonly called water hyacinth. Okay, so all four categories, runners, stolen, suckers, offset along with the examples. Every day you have learned in each class a few categories. Let us put all together this complete block diagram for stem modifications. Now, just now we completed and studied what? Aerial stem modifications. Let us write tendrils. Okay, in tendrils what is that we studied? I am writing up axillary bird means. What we studied? Passiflora. You people can write in the horizontal notes. Continuation of this you can go down. Okay. As I do not have space, I am writing up. Passiflora and remember all the gods. Okay. G U O. Right. Now, what are they? Pumpkin, cucumber, and watermelon. Right. And what is terminal one? Modified into tendril in case of these two, you can take whitis and scissors. This is grape vines. Right. Simply you can remember terminal one, axillary but modified into tendrils. Next is thorns. So, if you take thorns, axillary bud and terminal bud, better you write AB and TB. This is diasporia and duranta and this is carica. Right? Next is hooks. Better you can write down axillary bud and terminal bud. What is axillary bird? Here you can write Hugonia. Example, here you can write Atra Botris. Okay, so here hooks if you take axillary bird modified into hooks, example Hugonia, terminal bird modified into hooks, Atra Botris. Similarly, if you look at you know, Opentia. Right, euphorbia and casuarina. What are the examples of opentia, euphorbia, casuarina? Similarly, you take cladophyll. What we will write? Ruscus, asparagus. What are they? Ruscus. Asparagus. Similarly, one more is left, right? What is that one more? I am writing here on aerial modifications. I am writing here E after F, bulbil. So, vegetative bud, diascoria and floral bud. This is vegetative bud, right? And floral bud, globa and agave. In your notebook, you can continue writing. Okay. Tendrils, axillary bud examples, terminal bud examples. Thorns, axillary bud examples, terminal bud example. Hooks, axillary bud example, terminal bud example. Philoclade examples, cladophyll examples. And last part, I am writing this. You go down. F is bulbil, vegetative bud. VB means vegetative bud. FB means floral bud. Vegetative bud, diascoria. Floral bud is globa and okay. Guys, make sure that you study these all stem modifications, listen and practice number of times and if you can get thorough with the stem modifications, there are possibilities sometimes, it is a basic thing. Only the thing is you have to struggle with examples. 
but every day if you can if you are really practicing every day that day practice and if you are learning and you are revising your practicing number of times now it's easy to make the complete table for stem modifications and i can assure you this is a first year morphology chapter with this stem modifications if you remember all three categories with all the subheadings with all examples if you can practice because this we have done in one day class today so from the last three days if you can concentrate on the small thing and if you complete it this you completed for the last class with the perfect preparation if you complete this today perfect preparation if you complete the whole table if you can remember all the examples of the plants guys mostly we will get two questions from the stem modifications yes if not at least one question we will get this is a first year morphology chapter basic chapter uh, stem modifications we have surely as possibility of getting least of one question any one example or any one conceptual question from this compulsory will get one question minimum in the final need sometimes there are some previous need papers we have two questions from this stem modifications that is why I am telling this much time to stress on this simple basic and every day you are doing little bit little bit and little bit put today everything on the white paper horizontal papers practice number of times it becomes very very easy to remember all the examples if you do this work successfully finally definitely we can crack getting one question on the final paper